What's up, everybody? Uh, okay, so today I thought I would answer number 545 on um, my AMA. This is about React hooks and the container present, uh, presenter component pattern. Um, Sean emailed me and asked me this, and I asked him to put it on the AMA so that you could all see the answer, because I think it's an interesting question. <clears throat> so first off, if you're not, um, like if you are not familiar with the presenter, presentational versus container component pattern, um, I think this is like where the um, concept really got distilled down into a good definition. Um, by Dan Ibramoff. So I will paste a link to this in the chat right now. Um, and if I remember, I'll paste a link to the description uh, or in the description. So um, basically the idea is um, you have a component that's responsible for state and um, yeah, basically state or, or uh, interactivity with browser APIs or whatever, it's, it's logic. And then you have another component um, type that is only focused on the, what things look like. And so that would be the presentational com um, component and then the container would be the logic and whatever. Uh, that's the basic idea of the separation there. So this person, uh, Sean, is wondering, okay, so what happens when React Hooks comes along and changes how we, um, um, or gives us another option, I should say, on how to do uh, logic? So, uh, Sean gives a couple suggestions. So first, um, there's no more separation. You just uh, take what you had in your container and just put it, put that as a like, like inline in your present presenter component. Um, that's he suggests. That's kind of what render props gives us. Um, uh, but like when you use a lot of render props, your markup gets unwieldy. That problem is not a problem with hooks because uh, there's absolutely no nesting. So I'm not really super concerned about that. That's actually probably the way that I would go. I actually don't use the container presenter component pattern a whole lot. Um, I don't find a whole lot of value out of it. Probably should have specified that at the beginning. Um, but uh, yeah, because I don't mind my render method getting big or whatever um, all that much. And hooks is going to make it even more palatable. So. Um, but yeah, so I think that's probably the direction uh, that I'm going to go for some situations. Um, so here is suggesting also keep the pattern as is and the container component would just do a bunch of hooks and then pass values to the presenter component. Um, and, uh, and the presenter component remains untouched. That's, um, that could work too, uh, but I still don't see a whole lot of value there. Um, at all. Um, I like you just take all that those hooks and stuff and just put them in the presenter component. I don't I don't see a reason to separate those, but like I don't see a huge problem with doing that either. So you can do that if you want. Um, so instead of creating a container component, create a custom hook that's only used by your presenter component, allowing you to keep the stateful logic in a separate file from your pres uh, presentation, but not requiring the creation rendering of two separate components. This is the option that I um, am expecting most people will do, and, and I'll probably do this quite a bit. Uh, if I see that stateful logic is getting pretty complicated, I'll make a custom hook out of it. Now, whether I'm going to put it in a separate file, um, I don't know. I probably won't. I um, I don't like making lots of files. Y'all love making, like, here, let's talk about how we're going to structure our applications. Like, I don't know. I don't think that it's all that necessary to, um, to separate things just because, um, so yeah, I, I'll probably just keep it in the same file unless I'm reusing it um, in, in multiple places, then I'll extract it out. Okay, so um, I thought it would be good to, um, uh, sorry, I just got a notification, I should turn those off. Um, I thought it'd be good to, to demo how this would work. So here we've got my favorite example ever, a counter. Um, by the way, foobar, I don't think that there's a problem with foobar examples because um, your goal isn't to understand the context uh, or like how this component works. Your goal is to understand how the what the how the principles applied, and then you can go apply it to more practical examples. So that's why I start with kind of foobar uh, nonsense because I think that it's it's a useful mechanism, um, and that's why I have um, do um, let's see it's uh, hooks and suspense. And then refactor react. Um, I'll paste both of these in here. Why not? HTTPS, KCD, IM, um, hooks, and suspense, and 
um, refactor React. <clears throat> and so this is where you can learn hooks with very contrived examples. Um, and then you can watch this with a very practical examples, which will show you, hey, here's an existing application. Let's refactor it uh, using hooks. So yeah, that's cool. And people seem to like it, which is also nice. Um, so we're starting with this totally impractical example. Before I go into this, though, I've noticed there are quite a few comments. And let me just make sure I'm not missing anything important. So some people are saying hello. Um, I think the natural direction is for the container component to become the hook. I agree with King Daro there. Uh, custom hooks to the new container. That's what Sean said. Uh, we have two Sean's here. So Sean Mitchell said that. Um, a separate file doesn't seem necessary if it's not used anywhere else. I agree. Um, yeah, keep related stuff together. Actually, you know what? That's, uh, I've got a blog post about that. Uh, what code or what, uh, yeah, comments and teach us about scaling a code base. This is a really bad uh, title uh, for the article, but it's about that that concept of keeping um, place files as close to where they're relevant as possible. Uh, so this is talking specifically about tests, but it's generally um, applicable. Here, I'm going to just paste this in here. Um, oh, goodbye, Sean. Um, uh, Sean, one left. Um, but yeah, this is the basic principle that I strongly recommend um, that you follow. Keep things as close to where they're relevant as possible. Don't unnecessarily separate things. OK, cool. Having answered those questions and, and comments and things, let's refactor this to um, hooks and see what happens to our presenter container. Now, um, typically, like your container is probably going to be a generated um, component from a higher order component or something. That's what I see a lot of the time. You'll use Redux or something like that. Um, but it doesn't have to be. And so we're, we're just using a regular class component that has um, mechanism or has the state mechanisms for updating the state logic associated to like how it's initialized and all that stuff. Um, and then its render uh, just renders the presentational component. Uh, presentational component just renders mark markup, but it can also render other containers. Um, it's just responsible for laying things out on the screen. So. Um, here it's just rendering the button and passing on increment to on click and the count to count. Now, if I was really building this, I would just stick this right here and we'd be done with it. Um, I don't see any reason to separate these two components um, except for the purposes of this exercise. So what am I going to do? What I um, personally would do to, uh, to start this is um, as you're refactoring stuff, you want to do as little as possible and commit and push that and ship it and just make it done. What happens when you're refactoring, especially with large refactors, is you get like a week into the refactor and then your project manager comes or, or the DevOps people come and say, everything's on fire. We got to fix everything. It's just a total mess. And you have to leave your refactor. You come back to it two weeks later and you have silly amount of merge conflicts and it's sad. So um, in the... Um, in the spirit of doing as little as possible, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just convert this class component to a function component that uses hooks. So I'm going to say function counter container. And um, let's just take one thing at a time. So we need our static default props. So we'll do counter container dot default props. Uh, and then our state. So we're going to need to pull in use state. Here, let me bump this up. It's probably the font size is a little small. My bad. I'm normally pretty good at that. So sorry about that. Or at least I try to be good at that. You can be the judge of whether I'm actually good at that or not. Okay, so then our um, let's take care of our state with uh, const counter and set count. We'll not call it counter just the count equals use state. And um, this is going to accept props now initial count and step. And we'll initialize that to an empty object. And then we'll initialize each of these to 0 and 1. And then we'll pass the initial count to that. Uh, so that takes care of that. Then we need to make this increment thing. So I'm going to say, um, we'll just move this to do, do, do const increment, except instead of st state, it's going to be set count. And instead of um, destructuring the count, we're actually just going to get the count. And instead of returning an object that has the count, we're actually going to just return that count increment um, magic. 
Cool. Okay. So far, so good. Um, now we're going to take care of our render. So we'll just pull that up. Do, do, do. Return the counter button. Instead of this dot, it'll just be that. And instead of state dot, it'll just be that. Then we can get rid of our class. And everything should work exactly as it was before. Ta da! Hooray! Okay, cool. So, um, what are we going to do um, now? Like, we, we could leave this here, and this is effectively uh, step number two, uh, or idea number two from Sean, is we just leave the counter components as they are. Uh, the, the presentational components don't change at all, um, but the container components um, just get refactored to hooks. So we could keep it this way, but I don't see a whole lot of value in doing that. Um, I see a lot more value in just doing this. And then we uh, take our props here. Actually, here, let's do it the other way around. That'll be easier. Uh, there we go. So then we'll move this up here, our presentational stuff there. We'll get rid of that. And on click, increment, and we can get rid of that. To me, that's a lot simpler. Um, and then if you really want to, like let's say that this gets really complicated, we're gonna just make a function called use counter. And this is going to take some options, initial count and step. And then we'll do this stuff. Do, do, do. We'll return the count and increment. And then we'll say const count and increment equals use counter initial count and step. Um, and if you're going to be return like to typically, if I'm going to make a custom hook uh, to kind of separate logic, <clears throat> it's going to be because there was too much logic to make sense in this um, function component. So um, if there is too much logic, then there's probably more that I need to return. And if you're going to do that, then I would actually return an object. But because we're just making a thing that has a state and a mechanism for updating the state, I'm fine um, returning an array here. But yeah, typically I'll probably return an object from most of my custom hooks. Okay, so we've got this. I'm actually going to make one other change. Um, instead of doing a um, oh, and actually, you know what? We can get rid of these default props. Could have done that a long time ago because we had uh, defaults right here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so I'm going to actually move these defaults um, to here instead. And then uh, we just get rid of that. And actually, uh, fun fact, you will never need to do this in a function component. So that was my bad. Function components will always get the props. Um, but that is not true with um, hooks because you're the one who's calling the hook. React is calling your function component and it will always call it with an object of props. Uh, so I didn't need to put a default object here. That was totally useless. But I do need to put a default object here um, because users of useCounter might not actually provide any options. Uh, okay, so I've got my defaults up here. I've got my logic up here. Um, I'm returning all the stuff that I, um, people will need from my custom hook. And now that's my function. Um, and now I'm not going to call it container anymore. I'll just counter. That's all it is. Um, I feel like that's like way simpler. This is one of the reasons why I'm so excited about hooks is because it's just, it's so, it's so clean, right? It's, yeah, it's awesome. So this is what I'm um, going to do. I'm pretty sure that looks, yep, almost identical to what I had prepared before. Uh, so I'm going to undo all this stuff. So we leave it the way that, oh, whoops. You can see me and what I was doing before. Oh, there we go. Um, do, 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 do. There we go. So this is what it was before. Here is what it looks like after. I think it looks great. Um, so in answer, uh, and to summarize, in answer to Sean's question, um, I think that typically we're going to go with number one. Uh, I, that's what I'm going to do most of the time. That's what we'll do. I will probably never go with number two. I don't see a lot of value doing that um, of just leaving, uh, having container components at all. I don't see value in container components much even today, but uh, certainly not with hooks. Um, and if a particular set of um, um, hooks usage gets really complicated in a function component, then I will make a custom um, hook. Um, and in that scenario, it's probably going to be only useful for um, uh, for the file. And so I, 
I'll just put it in that same file. If it's going to be reused otherwise, um, in other places, then I'll uh, reuse it. I'll put it in another, another file for reuse. Um, but like, even like it would have to be pretty weird and complicated for me to want to separate it out. Um, and in that situation, I probably it's probably a collection of multiple um, um, concerns that I'm interested in separating out. So I'll actually probably have multiple hooks and then I'll use them all um, in the function component. Um, and actually I show you how to do that in um, refactor react in my um, uh, simp what did I call it? Uh, simplify React apps with React hooks. Um, I show you how to do that in that course. Um, I think it's the query component. Why is find not working? Oh, I don't. Uh, none of them are titled with query component. But yeah, in um, yeah, in some of these we yeah extract generic React hook code into custom React hooks. I show you how to do it in that one. Um, so. Yeah, hopefully that um, answers the questions. Well, let me answer a couple other questions. So Sean Mitchell is asking, thought you were switching to TypeScript. Yes, I am, but I typically like to keep my teaching um, more generally uh, like useful. Even if you don't know TypeScript, you should be able to understand what I'm what I'm writing. And yeah, like maybe you could get it, but like once I start using generics and stuff, then people are going to be like, what is going on? And so. Um, when I'm teaching stuff like this, I'm going to use vanilla JavaScript. If you know TypeScript, then you should be able to convert vanilla uh, JavaScript to TypeScript. So um, the burden is on you, um, smart developer. Uh, but uh, yeah, so Jake is wondering, are hooks stable now? No, hooks are not stable. Um, uh, you will you will not, um, uh, you will not, well, yeah. Um, you will find out that hooks are stable. When hooks are stable, you will open Twitter that day and everything about um, on Twitter will be about hooks. Um, yeah, hooks will not be released without you knowing about it. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay, um, my guess is in the next, uh, within the next month, maybe two, but I think within the next month, we're going to have hooks stable. So that's just my guess. I don't work for Facebook. I don't have like a secret in well, with the with the crowd or anything um, that like they haven't told me when the release date or anything, so uh, yeah, just my guess. All right, um, that's it for me. I hope you have a wonderful day. I gotta get running. I'm gonna have a, a breakfast with some folks to talk about my book, which you can read right here. Sherlan, it is a uh, a fantasy novel. Here, I'm gonna paste it right here. HTTPS KCD. I am Sherlan. And there you go, enjoy, it's fun, it's great. And we actually have a chat that you can join and there's a newsletter for it too now. So have fun with that. All right, I gotta go. Um, I will see you all later and hope you have a nice day. Goodbye.